Welcome back to Andrew Says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. We're up here in the confines of Norway in the snowy mountains watching Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez act like a crazy person over at Congress once again. She even manages to make Mark Zuckerberg look like a super ethical genius individual. He may be a smart guy. Uh, we don't know for sure about his ethics, but AOC sure makes him look great by comparison. AOC is the girl in school who studies hard, you know, she gets good grades, but she can't really read between the lines, she's not familiar with nuance, she's super awkward socially, super na super naive, and in this case she's so clouded in her naive elitism that she can't understand why anyone would not agree with her. When did Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg become aware of Cambridge Analytica? I, I don't know off the top of my you head. You don't know. She just comes across so pompous to me. She's she's reminded me of like a judge, the the wig from the 1800s in Britain. Mm, you don't know? Mm, how unfortunate that is. Huh? How dare you not know, Mr. Zuckerberg? When was the issue discussed with your board member Peter Thiel? Uh, Congresswoman, I don't I don't know that often. You don't know. This was the largest data scandal with respect to your company that had catastrophic impacts on the 2016 election. You don't you don't know? Well, Congresswoman, I'm sure we, we discussed it after it uh, after, after we were, were aware of what happened. Okay. Catastrophic impacts, everybody. You know, it, it seems to me like she just wants Zuckerberg to just throw up his hands and be like, yes, the Russians interfered, we have no control, we sold all this data to the evildoers, and that's why Trump got elected. I'm so sorry, AOC. We'll do whatever you say. We'll delete anyone's <laughs> account that you don't like. Please, Miss AOC, implement your eco-communism. Um... You announced recently that the official policy of Facebook now allows politicians to pay to spread disinformation um, in 2020 elections and in the future. So I just want to know how far I can push this um, in the next year. Under your policy, you know, using census data as well, could I pay to target predominantly black zip codes and advertise them the incorrect election date? No, Congresswoman, you couldn't. Now here's where it starts to get very stupid and annoying, frankly. AOC doesn't seem to be aware that there are laws against lying and advertising. She just wants Facebook to do whatever she says. Facebook already checks political accounts for advertising. I know this because I try to advertise on Facebook sometimes. Even when it's not political things, they might stop you anyways. Might not put it in certain countries. They don't let me put things in America that are of national interest or political interest in America. Because I'm from, insert, snowy country here. Now she comes in here not knowing anything about this and just accuses Mark Zuckerberg of spreading hate. It's pretty ridiculous and even if that did happen, even if that is what happened, which it wouldn't happen, her example there, because it would be an international story and everybody would be all over it, she's saying it's Facebook's fault and they had the responsibility to tell you not to believe something not to believe an ad. This is why she's such a socialist, because she wants the people to be taken care of by the state. In this case, it's, it's Facebook. She wants Big Brother to decide what is wrong and what is right for you. Before no effort on your part, Facebook has to decide for you what is lies and what is truth, so long as it agrees with her, of course. No personal autonomy, uh, just let the, the powers that be decide what's right and what's wrong and what you should see. That's the big part of it here is that you're getting, you want a website to decide what is truth and what is not worthy of the public seeing. But it does get worse as we watch the rest of the video. We, we have, even for these policies around the newsworthiness of, of mm -hmm. content that politicians say and the general principle that I believe that... But you said you're not going to fact check... My we, ads. We have, if, if, uh, if anyone, including a politician, is saying things that uh, can cause, that is calling for violence or uh, could risk imminent physical harm or voter or census suppression mm -hmm. when we roll out the census suppression policy, um, we will take that content down. So, so you will, there is some threshold where you will fact check political advertisements. Is that what you're telling me? Well, Congresswoman, Yes, and for specific things like that, where there's imminent risk of harm. Could I Both run ads targeting Republicans in primaries saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? Sorry, I, I, can you repeat that? Would I be able to run advertisements on Facebook targeting Republicans in primaries saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? I mean, if you're not fact-checking political advertisements, I'm just trying to understand the, the bounds here. What's fair game? 
I, uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I think So probably. you don't know if I'll be able to do that? I think probably. Um, yes, AOC, he's going to take down things that are crimes. That should be obvious. I can't believe Mark Zuckerberg. If I'm him, I'm sitting there being like, how did this teenager get elected to Congress, and why is she trying to, like, bully me? Why does she think she has the moral authority? She, she wants fact-checking because she wants fact-checking that agrees with her. You'll see what I mean in a bit. But there's no such thing as, a, as an independent fact-checker. It's all from different sources. This wasn't a thing until the 2016 election. I mean, yes, you had newspapers and publications that had internal fact-checkers to see uh, statistics and facts and sources and make sure that you didn't publish something that made you look foolish. But in terms of fact checkers for the general public, that's not a thing. They started that in 2016 during the election. So they could take things that Trump said or anyone else they agreed, disagreed with for that matter and just be like, actually, this is wrong. And they did it in such little stupid, little subtle ways where it's just like, well, technically, what he actually said, even though he was making a metaphor, was actually this. So he's actually wrong. Uh, 3,000, that's where the... Trump's lied 2,000 times already, you guys. Because they take things like this, we're going to bring it up, the glory years of fact checks. It wasn't... It, it was He didn't physically... She didn't physically bleach it, you guys, okay? She didn't actually pour acid on the computer chips. The fact checker is you. It's no one's job. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a job to fact check things for the general public for, if anything, for the sole reason that it can be so easily abused. And the uh, bleach bit thing is a hilarious example of how it can be abused. They just, uh, they went a little too far on that one and realized they had to roll it back a little. Do you see a potential problem here with a complete lack of fact checking on political advertisements? Well, Congresswoman, I think lying is bad. And I think if you were to run an ad that had a lie, that would be bad. That's different from it being, uh, from it, from, for in our position, the right thing to do to prevent uh, your constituents or people in an election from seeing that you had lied. Um, so we can, so you won't take down lies, or you will take down lies. I think it's just a pretty simple yes or no. Congresswoman, uh, in I'm not talking about spin. I'm talking about actual in, yes, disinformation. Yes, in most cases, in a democracy, okay. I believe that people should be able to see for themselves. What politicians that they may or may not vote for? So are you saying won't take them their down. Character for themselves. So you won't take. You may flag that it's wrong, but you won't take it down. Uh, Congresswoman, it's. Uh, it, it depends on the context that it shows up. Organic post ads. Right. The, the yes, Congresswoman, lying is bad. It, she wants to legislate lying in, on social media. I don't get it. She just wants people to take things down that she doesn't like. This is what we have now. A 17-year-old who doesn't like mean things being said about her or anybody else she agrees with in Congress. And before, I feel like 2015, we we're all past this as a, as a society, as humanity. We didn't have people saying, oh, communism and socialism, you guys. Now we have to go back and explain symbol logic like this where we have to tell them Facebook already takes down, people down for politics that they don't like. Uh, they've already taken down accounts for things they don't like, but AOC wants them to go further. We want to have people who decide what's a lie and what's not a lie on things that are clearly up for interpretation, depending on which side of the aisle you come from. So now let's force a private company to spend its own money to determine, the <laughs> determine for the people uh, who is a liar and who is not. Just for you, AOC. What she's asking for is actually called it China, if you're, if you're familiar with a place called that. Uh, you say something that the government doesn't agree with on social media, goodbye. Uh, you say something that uh, is against Chinese commerce, goodbye. Now keep in mind that this is all about lying and this is all about uh, her wanting fact checkers. And then she says stuff like this. Treatment is a little one bit question, one more question. In your ongoing dinner parties with far-right figures, some of who advanced the conspiracy theory that white supremacy is a hoax, did you discuss so-called social media bias against conservatives, and do you believe there is a bias? Uh, Congresswoman, um, so I don't remember everything that was in the, send in, in the question. That's all right, I'll move on. Can you explain why you've named The Daily Caller, a publication uh, well-documented with ties to white supremacists as an official fact checker for Facebook? Congresswoman, sure. We actually don't appoint the independent fact checkers. They go through an independent organization called the Independent Fact Checking Network that has a rigorous standard for who they allow to, uh, to serve as a fact checker. So 
you would say that white supremacist tied uh, publications meet a rigorous standard for fact-checking? Thank you. Uh, Congresswoman, I would say that we're not the one assessing that, that standard. The international fact-checking network is the one who is setting that standard. So to be fair to the Daily Caller, we're going to show their reply here. Our reporting has directly re contributed to putting four members of the alt-right in prison and sending two more on the run at great personal risk to our reporters on the ground. And it is minority-owned and minority-run news company with a diverse staff, including many African-American, Jewish, Asian, and minority employees. Any allegation that our company is in league with white supremacist types is offensive. We've denounced white supremacy in the past and are happy to do so again. We share nothing with them, and they aren't welcome at our company. For a sitting member of Congress to knowingly repeat such spurious allegations, especially during these polarized, violent times, is just not despicable. It endangers our staff. So Daily Caller... Uh, this is the second time I've read this. I didn't really feel it the first time, but now that I'm rereading it, it sounds very social justice-y. Um, we are diverse, and this is despicable. It endangers us. The truth is, and I went ahead and fact-checked AOC on that because she loves fact-checkers, that uh, they used to have some people who wrote for what seems to be white supremacist thing um, from The Atlantic. The Daily Caller editor wrote for an alt-right website using a pseudonym. Scott Greer, an editor and columnist of The Caller, also wrote as Michael McGregor. Michael McGregor for Radix Journal, the publication associated with the alt-right figure Richard Spencer. And from Salon, whom I do not trust, uh, <laughs> The Daily Caller has a white nationalist problem. Here's what The Daily Caller doesn't want you to know. Now, both articles talk about guys like Jason Kessler and Scott Greer, who, from what I know, are shady individuals who were fired or stepped down from The Daily Caller. So what you have is a daily caller trying to be really establishment here and saying you're endangering your words are violence you're endangering us uh, we have many minorities not addressing the fact that they did have these shady guys um, writing for them now that's a normal thing so in the sense that companies hire people that they don't properly vet and they have to fire them or they say something stupid and they have to fire them and let them go happens all the time uh, I'm not excusing daily caller. Um, for doing this and but I also don't want to overhype the uh, amount of influence these guys who may or may not be white nationalists they may be part of the deep state I don't want to uh, over sensationalize they're just random dudes okay they managed to get writing jobs uh, they're probably smart guys Richard Spencer's a really smart guy. I'm gonna get destroyed for saying something like that won't I um, it's the alt right thing is all like it, it's barely a thing. Nobody really cares. It's media companies talking about them that keep them up. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm pretty sure people wouldn't know who these guys are if there weren't articles like Salon writing about them. Nobody cares about their opinions. And furthermore, if they have stupid opinions, let's hear them. Maybe they sh Daily Caller shouldn't be hiring them. Should be vetting them. But uh, let's hear their stupid opinions. I disagree with them a lot. Um, so I'm okay with the Daily Caller as a whole as they are right now. I mean, they can be, as you can see by this response, I can disagree with them on how like defensive they are, and obviously they left out the stuff that is controversial. So, but in general, I'm okay with what they report and some of the videos they come out. There's a guy who dressed... There's two guys who dressed as Batman and Robin for some, uh, <laughs> for some protests, and I thought they were just hilarious. So I'm okay with them, except for when they are directly ripping me off. Let's uh, bring up uh, Soy Andrew here. This is Soy Andrew. Um, same microphones, exact same t-shirt. Shortly after I did a video wearing this, they posted this guy, one-time thing. Haven't seen him again since. Could be wrong. Maybe he comes back, but dressed exactly the same as me. He even has the same glasses that I wear that you've seen me wear in some videos. I should have got them right now, but whatever. Um, so I'm okay with them when they're not directly ripping me off. I should sue them like, uh, like Riff Raff did to James Franco. <laughs> but I'm not going to excuse them hiring these guys, these weirdos. Just like I don't excuse t CNN's terrible hosts. Um, it's called the Establishment Media AOC. And just like you don't want the Daily Caller to be your fact checkers, I don't want MSNBC or Snopes to be my fact checker because I don't trust them. And why? Well, that depends. Your reason for not trusting the Daily Caller is you think that they are um, 
white nationalist supporters or have these ties. But what about me? I could go a communist route if you'd like. I don't trust you because I think you're a socialist. I don't want you fact-checking Mark Zuckerberg. Um, Democrat operative ties all over CNN and MSNBC and uh, Vox and all these companies. I don't want them as fact-checkers either for my own reasons. So how about um, we just don't have any fact-checkers telling us what we can and cannot read. That's the thing I'm most... It's, it's political censorship. You've decided for me that I cannot read this, I cannot see this ad because somebody said the wrong election date. Get out of here, AOC. If you're stupid enough to not know when your own election day is and then Facebook ad, it must have been the Russians sowing dissent. And to an extent, they did, but did, did they? Uh, were they effective? No. Uh, that's the thing. You talk about one Facebook ad uh, from one source like this, a hypothetical one at that, and it'd be so damaging to society. So she wants fact checkers, but she only wants the ones she agrees with. Is the lesson here? Is um, we have to talk about? We have to um, entertain these teenager ideas where we can't see things objectively. She can't see the nuance or the reading between the lines here. She has to be, on one hand, all fact-checking is good, Mr. Zuckerberg, and we need fact-checkers to prove these lies. But whoa, not the fact-checkers, uh, not even Facebook selected. We can't be having fact-checkers that I don't like here, that I disagree with. And I'm no fan of Mark Zuckerberg or uh, Facebook in general. I don't like their censorious tactics. I don't like them bowing to China, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They've deleted many people I like. But when Zuckerberg, the Zuck, is schooling you on ethics and uh, has to teach you that lying is just a concept to, uh, up for interpretation in most cases, he's schooling you on ethics. That should be a signal, AOC, that you're doing something wrong, okay? Mark Zuckerberg, usually, you know, pretty low on the trustworthy poll. Uh, no cultural appropriation meant there, you guys. And then you bring in AOC, and she's all the way down here, and all of a sudden Mark Zuckerberg looks great. What can I say? I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. Fact check me, bro.